Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of our attendees joining us today for this latest Data Science Central webinar. This is Bill Voorhees, your host. I'm the Editorial Director with Data Science Central and also Chief Data Scientist for Data Magnum. I'd like to start off our event today by thanking Trifacta for sponsoring today's event. Trifacta is a longtime supporter of the Data Science Central community, and we're honored to have them sponsoring our event today. Now, past webinars are available on demand at datasciencecentral.com, and if you haven't had the opportunity to view them, I encourage you to take a look. They provide very useful insight into a wide variety of topics of interest to our data science community. Now, today's webinar is entitled, How the Role of Data Prep and ETL is Evolving, and that will be presented by Trifacta. But before we begin, I'd like to briefly review the format for today's event. Today's uh, webinar will be an hour long. Uh, we have two presenters who I'll introduce in just a minute. There'll be 10 to 15 minutes of Q&A following the presentation. And this event is being recorded and will be available on datasciencecentral.com later this afternoon following today's live event. Now, I'd also like to encourage our attendees to provide questions throughout the presentation because we'll be reviewing and presenting them on your behalf during the Q&A portion of today's event. Well, I'm very pleased to introduce today's speakers, Paige Bartley with Ovum and Will Davis with Trifacta. Now, Paige is a senior analyst on Ovum's information management team, specializing in all aspects of the data lifecycle, including creation, cleansing, security, privacy, and productivity. Now, Paige's other areas of expertise include regulatory and legal matters, data quality, unstructured data and NLP, master data and records management, and neuroscience and cognitive science. And prior to joining Ovum in 2016, she worked in research and marketing for ZL Technologies. Now, Will is Director of Product Marketing at Trifacta, where he develops and executes Trifacta's marketing and content strategies to rapidly expand business growth and brand awareness. Now, prior to Trifacta, Will worked with a variety of high-growth companies focused on data infrastructure, analytics, and visualization, including good data, Green Plum and Clear Story Data. Well, Paige, Will, hey, thank you being, for being with us today. We're looking forward to your presentation. As businesses have modernized data processes to prioritize self-service and agility, the need for more analysis-ready data faster has led to the advent of modern data preparation solutions. Now, data preparation platforms prioritize ease of use, rapid iteration, and machine learning guided functionality to make the traditionally tedious process of data cleaning more efficient and accessible for non-IT users. In comparison, ETL technologies were designed to support operational data pipelines with limited numbers of data consumers, prioritizing stability over speed. So organizations still need both, but how do you determine uh, when to use which approach? So in today's Data Science Central webinar, uh, join OVM Senior Analyst Paige Bartley for a presentation on the evolving role of data preparation and ETL solutions. Paige will review her latest research on data preparation market and why it's one of the fastest growing segments of the data management industry. Now, Will Davis will share best practices and real-world examples of organizations that have successfully implemented data preparation alongside their ETL as part of their analytics modernization initiatives. You'll learn why now, what enterprise needs were unmet before data preparation, how to balance speed and self-service with data governance and control, and criteria for determining which processes are best for self-service data preparation versus ETL. So, Will, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. You can begin as soon as you're ready to go. All right. Thanks, Bill. So, um, as Bill mentioned, my name is Will Davis. I head up product marketing at Trifacta. Uh, really excited to be joined by Paige Bartley, the senior analyst at Ovum, and recently um, finished a research on data preparation in the category. So we're excited to have her share those findings. And as Bill mentioned, the topic here is around analytics modernization and how the role of data prep in ETL is evolving as part of that. 
So looking at the agenda for our presentation today, I'm going to pass it over to, to Paige in just a minute, and she will be reviewing the history of data preparation, so what were sort of the factors that led to uh, the creation of this space, and then also how to view ETL versus modern data preparation in terms of the processes, the um, features of these technologies, and um, how to think about both. And then Paige will dive into some of the latest findings from her uh, research around the OVM decision matrix. So look at how companies are investing in data preparation and what are the technology differentiators that, um, between the vendors that are in that space. And then um, following Paige's presentation, I will jump into an introduction into Trifacta. Um, findings that we found from organizations on when to use data prep versus when to use ETL, and also some findings from um, the broader analyst community. I'll touch on some customer use cases, and then time permitting, we'll jump into a really quick demo of the product to give you a sense for what we do at Trifacta. And then as Bill mentioned at the end, we will leave time for Q&A. So with that, I will pass it over uh, to Paige to jump into her personal portion of the presentation. Take it away, Paige. Okay, well, thank you for that introduction, Will. And to start off, uh, it's impossible to understand uh, understand modern data preparation without having a brief history of how we got to where we are today. So uh, the traditional model is defined by ETL, so extract, transform, load processes. And this worked very well for, in operational processes where you have a few native repositories, you have a central data warehouse that stands as your single source of truth for analysis, and you have a limited set of BI tools with a limited set of users. And this traditional challenge was defined by some data source systems, maybe it was ERP, CRM, um, some applications. You need to standardize, join, blend that data, create um, a source of consistent data quality in that data warehouse, which provides your single source of truth where, where users can dip into that data warehouse for all of their analysis needs. And you serve those BI and analytics and users with ready data whenever they need it. Um, but there are some issues with this process. Um, architecturally speaking, traditional ETL and data warehouse processes were mostly linear and mostly driven by batch processes. So this is not a real-time process. This is done periodically, maybe over the span of, of several weeks, um, usually well-defined processes doing the same reports, the same analytics time and time again. Um, and the defining feature here is that this process is bottlenecked and entirely controlled by the IT department. Um, ETL is, by definition, an IT process. So when you're pulling this data from these source systems, such as CRM and ERP, blending it, standardizing it, this process is very technical in nature and relies on a few designated IT professionals to coordinate and, and create these ex extracts and transformations of data to load into the data warehouse. And once that data warehouse is created, that single source of truth, often then you'd have duplicates of data created into these departmental data marts, um, smaller versions of your data warehouse where it would be specialized based on department or business unit. And then that finally would be pushed to the consumption layer, which is your first generation BI tools, your, your limited sets of end users. And the key takeaway from this, aside from the fact that it's highly controlled and bottlenecked with IT, is that the timeline here is usually weeks to months. This is not, it's not a highly iterative process. It's not anywhere near real time. It's, it's defined by something that's a process that's done very periodically. So this, this could take weeks to months in many cases. But the needs are completely changing, and 
the reason this happened is that the self-service analytics movement and self-service analytic tools really shook the foundation of how users and uh, people within the enterprise really accessed and viewed data. The, the number of users who are potential data consumers within the enterprise has just exploded, and, and the impact that has had on the way we view and access data really can't be understated at all. So these visualization tools, self-service analytic tools, saw organic growth. Um, in many cases, they were brought in almost as shadow IT, um, kind of worked their way in naturally. This increased the number of data consumers. Um, they were offering direct connectivity to these data repositories and data sources. So users started to become um, expectant and used to having direct connectivity, so not going to a periodically refreshed data warehouse, but rather connecting to their preferred data sources. Um, this drove the expectation of near real-time results. And increasingly, uh, users had this had this desire to explore the unknown unknowns of data. So rather than just generating the same reports week after week for the same um, predictable uh, variables, which was part of the ETL and the data warehouse world, there's this de desire to explore unknowns and, and to do exploratory analytics where if you, you don't necessarily know what you're looking for, but rather to play with the data. And this, this growth of the self-service analytics movement has really changed the requirements around what data prep is and what it means to provide data preparation. So this, this shifting data landscape has prompted more flexible capabilities compared to traditional ETL. And there are all of these factors influencing today's needs, most of them going back to the expansion of the self-service analytics movement. But we tend to think of volume, variety, velocity, and veracity as being the four Vs of big data. But you can also apply it to um, modern data prep in a sense, because you have increased volume of end users or consumers of data, increased volumes of data. You have increased variety of applications and repositories that are generating data that needs to be prepped and blend. Um, veracity, data quality is more important than ever because you have more data sources. Um, and the, the importance of these decisions being based on data are actually growing. So as the, the business becomes more data driven, the importance of the decisions become greater. And velocity, business pace, is just increasing to, in order to remain competitive in, in the, the disruptive era, um, there, there's a sense of urgency and this need for agility that you need. Um, you need to be able to iterate quickly with your data, be able to change things if, if it's not working. And this periodic um, constrained linear process of ETL is not meeting that current need. So you have this explosion of data consumers, expansion of the self-service movement, um, shift of control from IT to business users. So as the self-service movement expands, business users are gaining more control of traditionally IT-driven processes. Um, business pace is accelerating. Again, you have more, more apps and data repositories with more sources of data. Um, a big one which m would merit its own webinar entirely is hybrid and multi-cloud architecture that is uh, distributing this data across all, all different sources and architectures. And then, of course, over time you have exponential increase of data volume. So all of this coming together is really um, driving a need for more flexible capabilities in terms of data prep. The linear ETL model is not meeting all of these needs that are being driven by um, essentially the needs of the self-service movement. So I, I won't go through this line by line, but essentially this is a comparison of traditional ETL processes and, and modern data prep. And 
one of the takeaways here is that something Will will get into a little bit more later is that ETL, or rather modern data prep, is not necessarily a rip and replace for traditional ETL processes. ETL processes still do have their place within the enterprise, but there are key differences here. And modern data prep essentially is meeting these needs being driven by the self-service analytics and visualization movement where you have um, a highly iterative pace with users directly accessing data from native repositories. These are um, a new frontier of knowledge workers that previously had no role in accessing data in many cases um, that are now accessing and leveraging data um, exploring data in, in many cases. And the destination of, of this data that's being prepped in many cases, for modern data preparation capabilities and tools, the destination is um, modern self-service and visualization tools, whereas traditionally it would have been um, more first-generation BI tools. So if, if you want examples for, for modern day, um, you'd be looking at maybe a Tableau or a Click, whereas previously that would have been perhaps a Cognos you're feeding your data into. And fundamentally, the difference between these two approaches is that modern data prep is supporting a vast audience of end users, whereas ETL, again, was supporting a, a much smaller audience of final data consumers in this process. So where does that bring us today, and, and why, why did Ovum find data prep to be a significant topic of research? Um, why now? What, what enterprise needs were un, unmet before modern data prep? And something that isn't on this slide and I think is merits a mention is that the business has come to realize that data is its core fundamental asset. And this is a fairly recent realization. I, I know we've all heard of the, the article, and I think it's um, The Economist, that you know, data is the new oil, data is the new business currency. And this is a fairly recent realization, but organizations are coming to terms with the fact that data is fundamentally what's going to be a competitive advantage for them. So as, as businesses are starting to realize this, you look back on ETL and the processes that were in place in this expanding scope of end users in the self-service model, and there are these needs that are being unmet. And it can easily be broken down for the most part into scale, agility, and control. So scale, um, ETL is not easily scalable. It's, it's an IT bottleneck. Is you have a growing number of self-service analytics users demanding prep data to put into their visualization tools, um, IT cannot supply all of the data that they want and need. Uh, the need for agility. Analytics users are used to having functionality at the push of a button. They want data when they want it, and they expect an iterative workflow if, if something they put into a visualization tool doesn't give them the results they want, they want to try something else immediately. They, they don't want to wait for that lag time. And the need for control. So as you have this explosion of self-service users accessing data, um, in many cases with, with a shadow IT um, sort of structure, as these tools were brought in by various business units, you often don't know what's going on. It's hard to tell which data is the right data and the business needs more control over, over this entire process. So these are the three core needs that were being unmet before modern data prep. And as, as Ovum started to look at this, this area of research, we knew that there was a strong demand for modern data prep tools, but the question is why? And we see this immense expansion of the self-service culture with um, increasingly self-service functionality across all different types of software products, not just visualization tools, but um, data prep and other, other tools as well. But as self-service expands, um, in many cases you're circumnavigating some of the traditional IT control that 
that IT had over data um, as you get more self-service users. So as self-service users expand, there's this growing need for enterprise governance over that data that's being accessed and leveraged. And that's where modern data prep comes in. Modern da data prep is architect, architected to help provide a lever of control to some extent um, to provide some data governance as the self-service culture expands and as data is accessed in, in more um, diverse and more fluid ways. So modern data prep reduces that end user dependence on IT while providing IT the back-end controls for governance that brings order to some of this chaos. And each year, OVUM does a very large survey of enterprise IT decision makers. And this is our data as we asked, what are your investment plans for the above technologies over the next 18 months? So this is a few months old, so you can consider this data to be over the next year or so. But we asked, um, what are your plans for investment in self-service data preparation technologies? And across the board, we see that about 20% um, in nearly every geographic region across the globe has a strategic investment plan for self-service data preparation, um, which is fairly significant. And if you look at, if you add that up with having a minor investment planned, that ends up being at least 50% or over 50% across all geographic regions. So self-service data prep where, where users can blend and, and prep data themselves is not only uh, something that we suspected to be growing in popularity, but is very strongly supported by the data that um, these decision makers across the globe are, are having having investment plans for this technology. Which brings us to the OVUM decision matrix. So this is the culmination of our research in data prep and really for, for any, any um, segment that OVUM focuses on. But the OVUM decision matrix is OVUM's flagship research. It's a comparative report, um, very quantitative in nature where we compare a, varying number of vendors in each given report. But this, this particular report was the OVEN decision matrix on self-service data prep for 2018-2019. Um, we looked at eight vendors, and it was released in June 2018. Um, this particular graph is a schematic, so this is not the actual results. Um, to, to get the results, you'll have to download it free from the Trifacta website. That's a little bit of a cliffhanger but um, it, is, it is available from Trifacta. And we quantitatively score vendors on various criteria. So this is on, on two axes. We score um, technology measures, which is essentially technology functionality, and execution measures on um, the other axis, which would be basically uh, business performance and business health measures, and then market impact is measured by the size of the bubble on the chart, so um, financial impact in the market, um, revenues, that sort of thing. So in, in the OVM decision matrix, these are, these are the, the key three criteria that we look at across whatever segment it is that we're looking at in this particular report that's available on the Trifacta website. We looked at self-service data prep. So for self-service data prep, the OVM decision matrix research, what were the high-level findings? Um, these were the key points. Um, there, we are seeing an increasing trend of platformization, um, increasingly large platforms that are including self-service data prep functionality. So, um, information management platforms, analytic platforms that are adding in data prep as a feature rather than as a standalone product, uh, which leads to the second point being that in, leaders in the OVM decision matrix for self-service data prep represent a variety of architectural approaches. So there still is that standalone purpose-built approach, but there's also that platform um, embedded approach 
where self-service data prep is embedded as a, as a feature within a broader product. And we also found that data prep vendors are very closely matched on their core data blending capabilities. There's, there's very little differentiation on joins and merges and, and cutting and blending data. Those capabilities are, are very consistent across vendors and providers. But in terms of dif differentiation, information governance is increasing in importance. So that governance functionality um, for the self-service ecosystem is increasing, not only increasing in importance, but growing as a differentiator. Um, there's notable variation between products ability to connect to BI and visualization tools. This is especially true for products that embed their data prep functionality within an analytics platform. If you provide your data prep functionality within an analytics platform, that means you're less likely to connect to other analytics environments. And in this particular OVM decision matrix report for self-service data prep, um, our only follower in the report represents sort of a niche approach where they were embedded within a data science platform rather than, say, an analytics, self-service analytics platform. Um, continuing on, enterprise cloud strategies are putting pressure on data prep vendors to offer broad compatibility. So as you, you'll see that most um, modern data prep vendors can run in, in the three major cloud providers. And native integration with execution environments such as Spark give the enterprise flexibility in data processing and the ability to leverage those existing IT investments. So those are the high-level findings from this year's research in self-service data prep. And as we go through here, um, as, as I mentioned earlier, there are really two axes that we look at in terms of assessments. There's technology, which is the x-axis, and execution, which is business health and business measures, which is the y-axis. Those two categories have various um, qualities that we assess and score. Technology features in this particular research um, had over 230 features that were evaluated, so it was very quantitative, very detailed. And we broke down technology categories into seven, uh, seven broad categories that really describe what a modern data prep product is. And looking at these, it's worth pointing out that data manipulation, the second category, that's your core data prep capabilities, transformation, blending, cleansing, enriching, modeling. That's only one of seven categories. So those, what you consider to be core data prep, um, traditional data prep functionality is, is really only a, a small piece of the functionality that a modern data prep or modern self-service data prep product really offers. Um, and looking a little bit deeper, we see that data governance and things like data output, analytics, collaboration, and machine learning, these are all features that are increasingly sort of the battleground between products. So speaking of differentiators, what, what were the what were the takeaways from this, this research and what did we find to be the major differentiators in the modern data prep market? And it was not the core data prep functionality. The, the joins, transformations, merging, cutting, replacing values, all of that is very consistent across products. Um, if, you, if you just need to join data, pretty much any data prep product on the market can do that for you. What you're looking for in terms of differentiations are the data governance capabilities and integrations and the collaboration and machine learning guided functionality. Um, so data governance, some examples would be either native data catalogs or integration with data catalog tools, um, primarily to help users find the data that they need. If self-service users cannot find the data they need, um, they're kind of left high and dry in terms of data prep, so that's, that's increasingly important functionality integration with Apache, Ranger, and Sentry, um, and automatic detection of sensitive data types such as social security number or phone numbers, and under regulations such as the EU's General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, 
functionality such as that is increasingly important. And collaboration machine learning, this is really about expanding the user base of self-service data prep. How, how do you make your average business user a more efficient um, preparer of data? And this is where this guided functionality comes in, building suggestions to help your users that are powered by machine learning, um, using, using machine learning to provide predictive transformations so that the user doesn't have to, to guess. It's helping them find the best way to transform data. And even pulling metadata and data from the social and collaborative activity on that self-service data prep product or platform to further create a feedback loop and train those machine learning models is something that we're starting to see more. So changing approaches to governance, as, as the self-service model grew and you had more and more of these users, it was circumventing IT control. And this was directly to the detriment of governance efforts within the enterprise. And what modern data prep is providing, and as we saw in some of those differentiators, is providing a mechanism for IT to enter back into this process and to balance the needs of self-service freedom and access with this back-end control and governance. So as self-service users access data repositories, access native, native data sources, uh, modern data prep ideally is creating this third layer in between where they can add some control in terms of governance without impeding self-service users and their access of data, kind of being this invisible third layer um, where they can execute control but not get in the way of self-service users. Um, so these modern governance needs are management of user roles and permissions, which is increasingly important, regulatory compliance requirements. We mentioned GDPR briefly, but that would be things like tracking lineage of, of how data is being prepped and changed over time. And all of this as well contributes to the quality and the validity of data sources when you can add in that layer of control. And Finally, in our research, uh, one of the things we found is that there are two primary vendor camps in terms of architecture for self-service data prep. There's an embedded approach and then there's a standalone purpose-built approach. So for embedded, we're seeing data prep functionality being built in as, as a feature rather than as a standalone product. Often you'll see large information management platforms or um, analytics platforms offering this embedded functionality. Their goal is to create more of a one-stop shop where users can analyze data and prep it in the same environment. And then there's the standalone approach, which is becoming slightly less common, um, but has merits of its own, where purpose-built data prep functionality is a standalone offering, and this is their focus is traditionally on depth of data prep functionality because there's that focus. They're not trying to build out an entire suite of other products and integration with other tools. So rather than trying to offer um, being a, a mile wide and an inch deep in terms of functionality, they focus on data prep and then integrate for everything else. So the best architectural approach is going to be dependent on existing IT infrastructure and workflows. Um, I wouldn't be a very good analyst if I, if I came out and said one is better than the other. It's always going to depend on your business scenario. But these are the two primary approaches that we see today, and this embedded approach is becoming more common as platforms get bigger. But moving on, um, I'm going to hand this over to Will, who's going to discuss a little bit more about Trifacta, which is actually an example of this ladder standard, standalone approach that we discussed a little bit. Great. Thanks, Paige. Appreciate you sharing um, your thoughts on the market, the evolution, um, some of the latest research you brought out, and also 
managing through some uh, you know slide renderings that weren't optimal. So appreciate um, that presentation. So um, for the remainder of the time we have today. I'm going to jump into an overview of Trifacta, um, talk through how to think about data prep versus ETL, sort of an extension of what Paige discussed, um, walk through some customer use cases. And if we have time, which it looks like we might not, I'll we'll dive into a demo, but we'll, we'll see how quickly I can get through the content. So I wanted to start with um, a, a quote from DJ Patil, who was one of the original data scientists at LinkedIn and who was the former chief data scientist at um, under the Obama administration. And he says, it's impossible to overstress this. 80% of the work in any data project is cleaning the data. Um, and so, you know, at Trifacta, we are exclusively focused on the preparation of data. Um, as Paige mentioned, we are a standalone product. We don't focus on data visualization. We don't focus on analytics. We don't focus on cataloging. We are exclusively focused on accelerating the process of data preparation. And we see that given the research that we've done in, in, in the broader analytics community, it's been widely documented that 80% of the time and resources of any data project is spent on data preparation. So we see this as the biggest bottleneck and the biggest opportunity to drive new sources of value for our customers. And so that's why we've exclusively focused on this, and that's why we see a big market opportunity um, within um, standalone data preparation. So if you look at the evolution of this space, um, you know, traditionally this work has been done in coding. So what once was a few years ago in SAS code, um, probably um, more recently is being done in you know, Python, R, or Java. Um, and so you know, looking at the coding approach, it's, it's reliant on technical uh, individuals within your organization, which you know are probably limited and overworked as it is. And then if you think about taking one-off scripts that um, are preparing data to be able to expand that more broadly across the organization from a scalability in terms of number of users and how repeatable that is across your organization, it's really hard to scale out um, you know, data preparation to a broader number of users just using a coding approach. Then looking at um, Excel or um, mapping-based ETL products, there are similar challenges. You know, around ETL, Paige mentioned that, typically um, used by IT, governed by IT, um, where you will just take requirements from business teams and build out ETL workflows. Uh, and building out those workflows um, from the start can take weeks to months to be able to productionalize. And that, for a lot of organizations, is um, too much time to be able to get value out of it. And if you look at Excel, yes, um, end user product used by analysts across, but there are limitations around um, scale of data, type of data, and also repeatability from an organizational perspective in you know, being able to share different Excel spreadsheets and understanding lineage and, and governing those whole processes creates you know, a huge amount of churn across an organization and create you know, um, analysis that is um, lacking quality and, and lacking overall governance. So a trifecta. You know, we're focused on you know, enabling the people who know the data best, the data analysts, the data scientists, and data engineers to be able to access data um, in a variety of different formats and to be able to explore it, transform it, clean it up, and um, create workflows that then can be repeatable across the organization and shareable across the organization. So making data preparation more efficient and also more scalable, um, as Paige mentioned, this self-service movement continues to permeate across organizations. And so this shift is, is taking place. So this is a quote I have here um, from Gartner. So as organizations are modernizing their analytics stacks um, and platforms and modernizing tools and processes around that, you're seeing that they're investing in data preparation as a key component of that modern analytics platform. And so Gartner predicts that by 2020, data preparation tools will be used in more than 50% of new data integration efforts for analytics. So there's a growing um, need for organizations to create faster ways to take raw data, create value out of, out of it, and, and have that be consumed to drive business decisions and to uh, improve business processes across the organization. And so data preparation is being seen more and more as a, as a key component to modernize processes and to create more efficiency and to enable self-service across the business. And so, so when to use which, this is a common question we get um, a lot of time. This is going to echo some of what 
Tage talked about earlier. So, you know, we view um, ETL, and our customers view this, and this is also, you know, the broader view within the analyst community is, you know, when you have existing well-defined use cases that have been built out in ETL products that we're not saying rip and replace those. We think that those um, production pipelines that have been developed within ETL technologies, um, as long as they're running in a scalable, repeatable fashion, there's no reason to, to touch those. Um, and these are typically going to be um, supporting production pipelines for you know, organizational BI initiatives, key KPIs across the organization, or other um, you know, reporting requirements across the, the company. Um, and so if those are in production, they're running in a scalable fashion, there are no issues, and we think that those um, should be continued to run in ETL. And, and a big difference is that these pipelines are typically developed by IT and governed by IT. So a business team will send over a set of requirements for data, IT will develop this pipeline, and then IT will govern this pipeline. It's a key differentiator between um, ETL and data preparation. So when you use data preparation, um, you know, reflecting some of what Paige said in the quote on the on the slide earlier is when there are new initiatives, when there's a you know a modernization effort, when there's a self-service initiative across the company, or if there's new data analysis that needs to be um, prepared that modern data preparation technologies are critical to those initiatives. So if we're looking at new data sources, new combinations of data, or you know, unfamiliar data that may be coming from a third-party vendor, this is when data preparation is a critical technology to enable the success of that initiative. Um, and then within these technologies, you can move from ad hoc exploration, cleaning, um, and building out of, of a workflow, and then push that into production all within a data preparation platform. So the, the, um, the, the nice thing of, as these technologies have evolved, you can build out a ad hoc workflow, but then set that workflow into production to run on a repeated basis um, in a governed environment within a data preparation technology. And the key difference is that the workflows you're developing in a, in a data preparation product are developed by business users, so developed by analysts, um, but then governed in collaboration with IT. So the um, IT organization can, can provide access um, to data using a, a data preparation tool and to provide them self-service exploration and cleaning. But then once pipelines are developed, they can work with their IT counterparts to make sure that there's a, the appropriate resourcing and there, there's the appropriate governance um, for getting these um, pipelines into production. So a, a common um, you know, decision framework that we've seen effective in the market today of, of when to use ETL and data preparation is something I recently stole from another analyst firm. Um, and it starts with, you know, is time to insight important? So is time to develop a new workflow important to you to get to sort of an analytic outcome? If no, um, then, you know, ETL is probably going to be a good fit um, for, your, for, for the work that you're doing. Uh, if yes, then th the question to ask yourself, is this an ad hoc, is this an ad hoc project or if this is recurring? If ad hoc, then data preparation is definitely the right technology to be leveraging for that initiative. If it's recurring, then the question to ask is, is there, are the sources of that project frequently changing? So is the data that you're bringing into the project uncontrollable? Do you get it from an external source? Are the, is the format of that data changing on an ongoing basis? If yes, then data preparation is a great technology because you can respond and iterate on the workflows you're developing in a very rapid fashion. Um, if no, then there's still value to promote data preparation internally um, and to try to um, engage the broader organization around that. So just a, a common, very simple framework that we've seen effective in, in, in helping organizations understand when to use which product when they think about um, the different um, data management analytics processes that are happening across the organization. So then moving into, you know, why Trifactus? So, so, so why um, us as a vendor? Um, you know, the, the, the company was founded out of joint research from Stanford and UC Berkeley dating back 20 years. So we've had some of the brightest minds in computer science, data visualization, machine learning, take a look at a very difficult problem and come up with a unique solution to solve that. And if you boil it down, um, the key differentiators that we see as a product are one is, is focusing on empowering people, so providing a user experience um, that any user can be able to have success with and to be able to um, get their work done. Um, and then second is improve efficiency, so make this what has been often described as, described as the garbage work or janitorial work around data to make that work more efficient, more repeatable, and more productive for, for the people that undertake it. 
And then three, as, as you know, we are increasingly being brought in as a standard platform across an organization um, as the sort of way data gets pushed from raw input to a diverse set of outputs is to align with enter enterprise IT around the, the platforms that are deploying these technologies on around security and access controls. So, you know, when you see our product, it's, it's very visual. It, it, there's a familiar tabular interface that would be familiar to Excel or for users of, of Tableau, the point-and-click nature of those technologies. We've brought a lot of that um, UX and, and the elements of design into our product. So uh, users are actually seeing the data, seeing the content of the data as they're exploring it and as they're um, transforming it, and they're getting constant feedback around each transformation that they're developing, how that impacts the data, and, um, and how they can actually drive to an outcome that can be published to downstream. So making this a visual process, making it intuitive, and making it um, so users that are familiar with Excel or familiar with other technologies to have a very quick learning curve and getting um, productive in the application. So the second way is, is improving the efficiency of this, pro of this process. So we've removed the necessity to code, so there's no coding required in our product. Um, all the transformations are supported through simple interactions or drop-down menus. So, um, and this makes not only developing initial workflows easier, but also when you think about the repeatability of these um, pipelines and thinking about iterations on them, not having to sift through a, a full, you know, lines and lines of code to understand what was done against the data and how I can reuse that. It's very uh, manageable. Um, all the transformations are in um, easy to understand plain English, so you can understand what happened to the data and how I can reuse certain elements of, of a workflow. We also um, leverage machine learning guidance. So as Paige mentioned earlier, machine learning is a critical component of these technologies and um, helping facilitate um, suggestions to users who you know, may not understand how to prepare the data that they're working with. So we have machine learning embedded throughout our user experience, so guiding users on issues with data quality, um, where they should standardize um, you know, formats, and the different transformations that need to to apply it to different aspects of their data, and that's a critical um, part of our user experience. Additionally, we, we are constantly upgrading um, our machine learning suggestions with training data. So we have a free product that is available for anyone to use. Um, it's called Trifactor Wrangler. Uh, and we also have a um, relationship with Google and a partnership around a product through Google Cloud called Cloud Data Prep by Trifacta um, that's used by thousands of thousands of users, and we're leveraging all this data in an anonymized fashion to improve the user experience and improve the intelligence we provide um, to our users through these suggestions. And third, um, you know, aligning with enterprise IT and making sure that you know, as you invest in Trifacta, you're future-proofing these investments. Um, so from a deployment perspective, Trifacta can be deployed on-prem. We can deploy um, in all three different cloud environments um, and increasingly in a hybrid or multi-cloud uh, environment. Um, and so as um, you develop workflows in Trifacta, all of those can be compiled down to different types of um, computing platforms. So they can compile down to um, Spark on an on-prem Hadoop cluster. They can compile down to EMR on Amazon Web Services. They can compile down to um, HDI on Databricks or Azure on Databricks, or uh, sorry, HDI on Azure or Azure Databricks, and then also on Cloud Dataflow with Google Cloud. So we are enabling users to support different computing frameworks. So as new um, computing frameworks come into the fold, we're able to seamlessly interoperate with those and support those as part of our platform. So as um, there's continued innovation around technology, we're constantly able to take that and adopt that within our platform. We also have extensive integration with security and access controls, so things like LDAP, Active Directory, and um, different security frameworks on the, all these different cloud or on-prem environments. We you know, adopt those policies and make them available within our platform to make sure that the right people have access to the right data. Uh, we also <clears throat> track every transformation that's being developed within our technology. Um, so there's a there's transparent lineage on um, how different data sets were derived and what were the transformations that led to that output. We also have integrations with 
data catalogs like Alation, Waterline, and uh, those provided by different uh, Hadoop distributions or clouds. So we're, we're constantly pushing derivative data sets that are developed in Trifacta to those data catalogs. Uh, and then we have a broad connectivity framework. So as data lives in an uh, increasing number of databases, applications, cloud sources, you can leverage that connectivity framework to um, bring in data, bring it into the, the transformation process, and, and output it wherever you need to, whether it's for you know, some database, for an analytic application, or um, machine learning application as well. Um, so taking a look at just a um, few of our customers, and unfortunately, it doesn't look like we'll have time uh, for a demo today. We'll have to take questions, and, but we'll be able to do a demo maybe in a follow-on session. Um, so we've had tremendous success in um, uh, you know, working with some of the leading organizations across financial services, insurance, healthcare, pharmaceuticals, retail CBG, and also government agencies. Um, so these are a listing of um, some of the key customers and, and public, publicly referenceable customers across those different industries. Um, and this is just a sampling of, of, of who we're working with. And there's a, a much broader list of organizations that um, we're working with across these industries that unfortunately aren't publicly referenceable um, at this date. So then looking at the additions that, that we offer um, as a vendor, so there's um, you know, with Trifactor, the, the user experience, the metadata, the logic you create in the application is seamless across all these additions. So um, regardless of whether you're working in the cloud, um, on a Hadoop environment, on our free Wrangler product, all the logic you're generating across those different projects is transferable across all these different additions and deployments of Trifacta. Starting on the left, we have a free Wrangler product that is for individuals. It's a cloud app. It's completely free. It's not time-based trial or anything of that nature. Um, there's community support, and there's limitations on some of the functionality and some of the data volume um, that is supported in that product. Then we have Wrangler Pro that's um, targeted at teams and departments. Um, it supports a broader set of connectivity to uh, cloud ecosystem and also uh, a variety of different relational databases and applications. Um, and that is a comes with enterprise support and it's priced at a you know platform support and also by um, number of users. And then we also have an enterprise product that has um, all the bells and whistles around connectivity, around customization, um, security integration, and, and all the things you expect from an enterprise product. Um, and that also comes with 24 by 7 support. Um, so with that, I'm going to um, skip the demo. Unfortunately, today we ran out of time. But I do want to call attention to um, the report that Paige went over in her presentation, the OVM decision matrix on data preparation. So this is OVM's inaugural report on uh, the self-service data preparation category. Um, and we're making this research available as a free download on our website. So if you're interested in learning more about data preparation as a category and also Paige's research, research we, we highly uh, recommend you go to our website and download this report for free. And you know, as a teaser, you know, one of the things we're, we really were pleased with is that um, Trifacta was ranked as the leading data preparation technology in that report. So something that we're very proud um, to promote uh, as part of this. Um, so with that, Bill, I will pass it back to you to kick off questions. Well, Paige, Will, hey, thank you for that excellent presentation. So we'll get started with today's Q&A. Uh, and I want to thank the audience for their participation. We had a lot of questions that have come in. And we'll do our best to get through all of them in the time remaining. And uh, during this Q&A session, I'll leave up this screen with contact information for Paige and Will if you'd like to contact them following today's uh, event. So uh, let's get started. Um, Will, you had a real nice uh, decision tree back on, I think, slide 34 that talked about, you know, uh, when you should use data preparation versus ETL. Can, can you just uh, give us some examples of what the top use cases are? Are these folks that are looking to reduce ETL or are they looking to increase self-service or what are some real examples? Yeah, Bill, so good question. We see you know, three high-level patterns of use cases within our customer base. Um, the first one would be this concept of data onboarding, which is taking external third-party or client information and blending that with existing data um, for some sort of analysis model that 
you know, oftentimes we have marketing analytics providers, healthcare analytics providers that are taking client data and providing some sort of analytic service to their own customers, and they're using Trifacta to do all the preparation and cleaning of data as part of that onboarding process. But this, this can also be done internally when you're taking diverse internal data into some analysis that you need to um, be more have more agility around. The second would be analytics, so use cases around customer 360, around risk analysis, customer churn, um, compliance reporting, things of that nature. And then the third uh, grouping of use cases around uh, machine learning or data science. We have companies that are using Trifacta to prep data for machine lear learning models to identify fraudulent pur purchases or to um, create a machine lear learning model around risk in the financial services industry. So I would say the three high-level use case patterns we see are those, are data onboarding, analytics, and then machine learning. Well, Will, thanks very much. Uh, you know, here's a question that I expect Will and Paige will both want to comment on. Uh, it looks to me and looks to the audience uh, as though uh, data preparation platforms, particularly Trifacta, uh, do everything that traditional ETL does. Uh, does that mean that, that these are converging? Is ETL going to go away? Um, I can take that on the first part of it, and Paige, feel free to jump in after that. Um, you know, I think, I think we... We um, tackle a different set of use cases. We focus on a different user, and um, and although we do similar things technically, from we both clean data, we both do some um, data movement. Um, but I think the, the 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 target that we're focused on is very different from what ETL is focused on. So, in no way are we trying to go into an organization and try to replace ETL. We're focused on self-service initiatives around modern stack that um, are taking on uh, new analytic challenges that they need a more agile approach to data preparation on versus trying to go in and replace existing ETL processes. Yeah, and I would add that the, the self-service audience that today's modern data prep tools are reaching, these are often users that didn't have any options or, or tooling available to them before. In, in many cases, they were using Excel spreadsheets to try to, to cleanse and, and prep their data. So it is reaching a fundamentally different audience than, than what ETL traditionally was. These are, these are reaching uh, underserved users in, in the self-service economy, so to speak. Oh, Paige, uh, Will, thanks for that response. And you know, further to that, the audience is wondering, and since you brought up the issue of, of underserved users, uh, presumably the folks that uh, are accessing data through uh, your platforms uh, are simply not as experienced with the, uh, the meaning and the accuracy of the data uh, that may be in the system. Uh, how does modern data prep uh, control or help the user make sure that they are finding the most accurate or single version of the truth? And, and where do uh, data catalogs and, and data dictionaries fit in all of this? Um, I, I, I could take a stab at this to start off with. I, I think there's a two-prong approach here. The first is governance, um, adding in these governance capabilities and, as you mentioned, data catalogs to help users really find the data that they need. But the second prong is guided functionality uh, and really that machine learning guided functionality to help users figure out the next best steps for what to do with their data, even if they aren't really sure themselves, helping, having the system help them understand what would be the best data to transform or the best data to join. So when you have both of those prongs working together, you have the governance integrations, governance functionality, data catalog integration or availability so that, data, so that users can find their data, and then you have that machine learning, ease of use focused functionality, helping users figure out their next be best steps with data. Those working together really help um, even the least experienced business users figure out how to prep their data in ways that are more powerful and uh, more useful than they would have been able to ever do on their own. And I yeah. will add in just quickly, 
Um, that a, a full answer to that question would take a long time. But um, I would say one thing is that we do provide a lot of um, free training and tutorials that help new users understand this process and to be able to get more efficient with this work. So essentially expanding their skill set from analysis maybe before to preparation and analysis and how this process should be, should be thought of. Um, and we also have a lot of support um, leveraging machine learning to show data quality issues, format issues, and things that we could easily understand um, just looking at the data to make sure that users see them and, and aren't making any uh, glaring mistakes. Well, Paige and Will, hey, thank you. Some great answers to some very good questions. Uh, and for those of you that asked questions today that weren't answered, uh, we'll be sending all the unanswered questions to Paige and Will and the Trifacta team so they can follow up with you after today's webinar. Uh, I have just a few quick announcements. If you'd please mark your calendars for September 19th, uh, that's uh, tomorrow. And that's our next DSC webinar, which will be Columnar Databases, Best Choice for Real-Time Analytics. Also, remember that today's uh, taping will be available for on-demand viewing uh, later today, and you can find that on the home page of datasciencecentral.com in the webinar tab located at the top of the page. Well, this brings today's webinar to a close, uh, and I'd like to thank our audience for their attendance and thoughtful questions. A special thanks to Trifacta for their sponsorship, and particularly our speakers today, Paige Bartley and Will Davis, uh, for their insights into today's topic. This is Bill Voorhees. I'm very pleased to have been your host for today's event. I look forward to seeing you all again on September 19th, tomorrow. Have a great day. <laughs>